Hi, I'm Spiders, and as someone who's been a top player for a while now, I've gotten the chance to not only play Ichitoma at a high level, but also observe some of the best players in the world at Ichitoma. As a result, I have quite a good understanding of what it takes to play each attunement in the most effective way possible. In this video, I'll be going over the first half of the attunements, and in tomorrow's video in part 2, I'll be covering the rest, so let's get into it. Now the first attunement we have up is Thunder Call. Now the number one Thunder monster that I think you should be running on every main Thunder build is Thunder Kick. Now Thunder Kick is honestly just a super reliable garbage monster, it has a great hitbox and a really nice windup as well. So Thunder Kick is definitely a really strong Thunder monster if you know how to use it, and something I really believe you should be running on every Thunder build. Now besides that, Thunder as a whole just has some really solid mantras, such as Jolt Grab, Fleeting Sparks, Lightning Impacts, Thorn Blades, Motion Wave, and Lightning Cloak. Now because Thunder has all these really strong mantras, the best playstyle is aggressive for Thunder Call. Now Thunder has a lot of really good catch mantras, such as Jolt Grab or Storm Blades, which are able to pretty much force a response from your opponent. This results in a lot of pressure for your opponent, and a very common way of relieving pressure is to hold block. Now something unique to Thunder is that it has two really good garbage mantras, which are Thunder Kick and Lightning Impact. And these monsters are able to really punish your opponent for holding block and playing passively like that. And these reasons combined make Thunder a really good aggressive attunement. So if you're an aggressive player, Thunder is a really good choice for you. Besides that, what I believe to be the best weapons on Thunder Call are the Storm's Eye and Katana, or Allied Katana. Now the Storm's Eye, people have mixed opinions about after the bullet removal, but I actually think it's still really good on Thunder. Rifles in general right now are just really strong and really underrated because there's so many weird mechanics with them, such as like having alternating swing speeds and super fast aerial attacks. And for the Storm's Eye itself, I think its crit is also really good still. It's somewhat quick and also gives you iframes, so it can kind of be used as an evasive or a counter. And also his hitbox is pretty big too, so that's another bonus. Besides that, the Alder Katana is just a really solid weapon as well, and really strong right now with its crit and stats, so it's also another good choice of thunder. Also, there's some thunder talents that only work on medium swords, so that's another bonus to using the Katana on Thunder Call. If you don't want to use those options, you could also use the Thunder Hero Blade, but the Storms and Katana are probably better right now, and that's what I've seen more top players using. Also, one more thing, with Thunder you can either run Base Thunder or you can run Surge Path, but I recommend running Surge Path, since in almost every situation it's just directly better, and just gives you more damage. Now the next attunement up is Shadow Cast. My top two Shadow Monsters right now are Shadow Eruption and Shade Wisp. Shadow Eruption is just super consistent right now, and is a super versatile monster that can be used in a lot of situations. For example, I think it's pretty decent in combos right now, since it can be hard for a lot of people to react to, due to its kind of hard to read animations and lack of a windup sound cue. I decided to also put Shade Wisp in here too, and I think it's just a really good monster to put in your support slot, since it just gives you free tempo, which is definitely a good thing, and it also hides your animations, which can be super annoying to fight against, and will probably be reworked soon. But while that's not the case, I think you should really be abusing Shade Wisp while you can, so that is what I recommend to you. Besides that, some other honorable mentions are Shadow Assault, Shadow Gun, and Circle and Rising Shadow. These monsters can also be really strong, but I wouldn't say that they're requirements in every build, and it's sort of up to you whether or not you want to use them. As for the recommended place on Shadow, I believe that to be balanced. Now, I don't think you really should be playing as aggressively as on Thunder or Gale, since Shadow is really good for sustain, because since you're able to steal people's ether and tempo, you can last a lot longer in fights without running out of tempo or ether, which allows you really consistent access to your mantras, which is an issue people have with Thunder and Gale, as time goes on. Besides that, I think that the current player that most people consider the best Shadow player in the world right now is Claudrum, and from what I've observed from his gameplay, he seems to play pretty balanced as well, so that's another reason why I recommend that. Past that, the best weapons for Shadow right now are probably the Deep Spindle, which is the new Rapier, for only Shadow by the way, or the Alloy Katana. The Deep Spindle is a brand new weapon, and because of that, it's not really balanced at all right now, and most people think it's pretty broken from what I've heard, so of course it's going to be a good weapon. And the Alloy Katana, like I mentioned for Thunder, is just a really strong weapon right now, and for Shadow especially, having access to the high posture damage crit is really nice, since Shadow doesn't really have a ton of easy ways to get posture damage, and there's also some pretty good synergy with the Alloy Katana and in Circle. You could also run the Shadow Hero Blade or the Crit Blade, which I think are still good, but from what I've seen from top players, these weapons aren't used as commonly as they used to be, and in my opinion the Deep Spindle or the Katana are probably stronger at the moment. Now moving on from that, the next attunement we have is Iron Sing. Now Iron Sing is an attunement that has a lot of very unique mantras with kind of unique abilities to them, but the best three in my opinion right now are Iron Slam, Chain Pool, and Call Traps. Now if you're going a main Iron Sing build, Iron Slam is just a super strong guard break right now. If you put Stratus and Cloudstones on it, it has one of the biggest hitboxes in the game for a guard break, and that makes it super reliable to use and relatively unique in that aspect too. Next up, probably the most surprising monster that I put in there for some people is Chain Pool. Now Chain Pool is definitely one of the most underrated Iron Sing monsters right now, and is a monster that is super quick and has relatively good range too. Now the best thing in my opinion about Chain Pool is that if you're able to land it, you can pretty much guarantee an M1 will land, assuming you're on a fast enough weapon, and if you're not on a fast enough weapon, you can just do an uppercut and guarantee that will land instead. This guaranteed landing of an M1 is super free on Chain Pool, which is not hard at all to land. 
which makes Chain Pool really good. And the third mantra that I recommend running on every Iron Sync build is Call Traps. Call Traps is definitely kind of a cheesy mantra, but it's just really strong right now. It does a ton of damage to be able to land all of the Call Traps, which you can pretty much guarantee in some situations. It also has some pretty weird effects to make it like hard to roll and so that you can't jump. And it also applies a ton of Iron Rods as well. And even past that, if you place them on the ground, you can be annoying and just camp with them if you feel like doing that. Some other really good Iron Sync monsters that you can run are Needle Barrage, Metal Fakeout, Rocket Lance, or Metal Ball. Now honestly, all of these monsters have some pretty cheesy gimmicks to them that make them really weird to play against and very powerful right now. But the result of this is that it's kind of evolved into kind of a weird style for Iron Sync. And the best playstyle right now for Iron Sync is probably Cheese, which is kind of weird to say because that's definitely not something that was probably intended with the attunement. But honestly, that's just what I've observed from other top players using Iron Sing, and that's just the current situation from what I've seen. Iron Sing is really just a cheese tool right now, and it's all I've really seen top players use it for at this current point in time. So if you're planning to use Iron Sing, take that as you may. As for what weapons you should be running on Iron Sing, it's kind of a wide variety right now. I've seen people run everything from dual guns to other tuned weapons like the Grand Staruska, but there really does not seem to be a clear consensus on what the best few weapons for Iron Sing are at the moment. Its legendary weapon, the Deep Crusher, isn't super popular right now due to a variety of reasons, such as its low scaling and bad requirements. So yeah, it's kind of unclear on that end at the moment. So just use whatever weapon you like best. Besides that, Iron Zing actually has a path called Scrap Singer, and I highly recommend using that path. Basically, it grants you access to a lot of talents that kind of manipulate armor, and as far as I'm aware, it's just a direct upgrade to Iron Sing right now. So Scrap Singer is definitely something you should be running. Thanks for watching, and be sure to look out for part two to this video tomorrow, where I'll be covering Frost Draw, Flame Charm, and Gale Breath. Like and subscribe for more top content, and I'll see you in the next one.